this notation tells you to take the sum. So what you have now is when you're taking a sequence and you're adding up the terms of the sequence, now you have what's called a series. So a series is the sum of the first term and the second term and the third term. It's the sum all the way to the nth term. And sometimes past that, depending on what kind of sequence we have. But what this means is the sum of the first n terms of a sequence. So we, when we do that, when we add up terms, we call it a series. So a series is the sum of terms from a sequence. Now, when you have a series, you could represent the series in what this notation is. This is called summation notation. So let me rewrite that because it looks a little blurry. So this is an example of one type of um, series represented in this proper uh, this notation, which is called summation notation. So you have this, this symbol here, which tells you to find a sum. Summation, find a sum. Start here at this value and continue to increase from this value, in this case one, all the way up until four. Integers though. No decimals, nothing. So the, so the first term is 1, the second term would be 2, and then 3, and then I would stop at 4. So this would tell me where to end, and this would tell me where to start, and then I have terms in the middle that are integers increasing by 1. This is the formula that I use to find um, the terms of the series. So notice that, you know, this is a variable i, i is starting at 1, and this is the variable i. If this variable does not match this variable, you cannot replace this variable with any numbers from here. For you guys, it should match all the time, but you know, maybe in the future it might not. So only i starts at one. So if this were like k, I would not plug these numbers in here. But they match, so we can we can you know do this. So my first term would start as negative one half to the i, and i is starting at one. So negative one half to the first would be my first term plus because I'm adding summation notation, so I'm creating a series. The next term, I'm starting at one, would be the next integer, two. So I'm going to replace i with now two. This is the second term of my series because I'm adding them up, plus, because this says take the sum, negative one half to the, I'm gonna keep going, third, plus negative one half to the fourth. Now I'm stopping here because this tells me to only take the sum of the terms up until i is equal to uh, 4. So I'm starting at 1, I'm increasing them by 1 integers up until the whole numbers, up until I reach the last one here, which is 4. So this is telling me where to start, right? And this is telling me where to finish. And this is, this is the formula that I use. And this is telling me to take the sum. So I'm creating a series. Okay, but now I have to actually simplify this because I should get a number. This is telling you, what, are, what is the sum of those first four terms? So let's simplify this. Negative one half to the one is negative one half plus negative one half to the two. So I'm gonna keep this, um, no, this is positive one fourth plus. Negative 1 to the third becomes a negative, so now this is going to be subtraction. So I'm alternating signs. Um, 1 to the 8, or 1 over 8, because 1 to the third is 1, 2 to the third is 8, plus negative 1 to the fourth is 1 over 2 to the fourth, which is 16. I'm going to cheat and use my calculator and just add these up rather than doing it by hand. But uh, you should know how to do it by hand, too. <laughs> Um, but the calculator is going to do it really fast with common denominators and all that stuff. So, I have negative one half. So, parentheses, negative one half. And add to that plus one fourth. Right. And then I'm going to subtract. Then I'm going to start to subtract. I'm just doing adding fractions and stuff. So negative one half plus one fourth minus one eighth plus one sixteenth. So I get this, but I'm gonna put it back in fractions. Negative five sixteenths. So if I were to do it by hand, that's what I would get. So 
negative 5 over 16. So this is equal to negative 5 over 16, and this is my answer. So this represents the sum of the first four terms in this particular series, um, which is the sum of the first four terms from a sequence. So, um, yeah, so there was a point made in the comment section in this private meet that this I might confuse some people as complex numbers. Be very careful. We are not complex. We are all real here. There are no complex numbers here. So, remember that we can use any variable in the world that we want in mathematics when we deal with complex numbers. I is particular, but that's only on that plane. We're not on that plane anymore, so I could represent anything we want this is not a complex case, okay? Don't confuse the two, be careful. I'm glad you said that, because that might happen to some people. Um, let me go in the opposite direction here. Now, <clears throat> obviously, since I'm adding terms, then that implies that I'm dealing with a series. But this is going to help me practice not only writing the summation notation, right? Not only writing this representation of, you know, a series, but also, it's going to help me practice writing the explicit form of the sequence if I want to. Because I have to find the formula such that I could directly plug in the term number that I want to get the actual term number. Or the actual term. So, the way that I do this that helps me is um, I like to put the term number next to the actual term value. So this is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term, and I don't know what term this is. We'll figure it out after we um, determine the formula. And I look for a relationship between the term number and the term. What I notice right now is that the numerator matches the term number. The numerator matches the term number. The numerator matches the term number. So that's going to help me with the numerator part of my explicit form. So a n is equal to n, right? So if I want the third term, I could do a3, plug in 3 for n, which would give me a numerator of 3, which would match the third term. I'm always double checking to make sure things work. And then the bottom, it looks like the term number is one less, right? One less than the denominator, isn't it? It's one less. So one less than the term would be n minus 1. So I'm going to double check. If I want the third term, a3, I plug in 3 here. I would get 3 on top. Oh. And then I would get a 2. That doesn't match, right? I want 1 more than the term number. So I need an n plus 1. So let's check that, right? I'm going to plug it in, double check that I wrote that properly. Um, make sure it works for at least a couple of them. You know, obviously, you could visually check it. So let's double check it. So let's do the, the second term, a2. So when I plug in 2 for n, I get 2 over 3. So the second term is 2 over 3. That matches. If I want, check the third term, a3, which is 3 over 4. That matches the third term, so I'm good. Which means that this would be the 14th term. And now what this represents is the sum of the first 14 terms of a sequence. Now this is the explicit form. Um, which is the formula for that series, uh, that sequence if I want, but to represent it in summation notation as a series, because this doesn't tell me to take the sum, this does. Take the sum of this formula, starting at 1, right, and ending at 14. Well, let me double check. Does the first term match what this says? So when n is 1, I get 1 over 2, which is what I want. Then plus, the next one would be the second. The last one says end at 14. So if I plug in 14, I get 14 over 14 plus 1, which matches this term. So this is the summation notation of the series. So obviously to write the summation notation of a series, I need to be able to write the nth term. This is the nth term. Uh, but in explicit form particularly, because I need to be able to directly plug in the n that I want. I want to be able to plug in whatever term number I want. Right? When I do it in this form. 
So I'm just going to do one more. Well, this would be 14 over 15, but I'm looking for the turn number. And this turn number would be 14. If I put 15 here, that would give me 15 over 16, which is not part of this sum. So it all depends on what you have. If they had plus another, um, let's say they had, you know, plus 15 over 16, then this would end at 15. So that's why I always double check, you know, plug in the first one, see if it matches this, plug in this one, see if it matches that. Plug in as many as you need to make sure that it, it is the same. Okay, because you can go back and forth as much as you want. Um, let's talk about this one. So, again, personally, I like to write the term number next to the actual term. So this is term one, this is term two. This is term three. Oh, this one is okay. <laughs> and I don't know what term number this is, right? Um, this one is two. So let's first write the nth term of this particular sequence, uh, which I notice a relationship <laughs> that the term number matches the actual term. The term, okay, so it's just n. Boom. So double check if I want the first term a one. I get one if I want to. So this means that this is the 40th term. It happens. And then that means that the, the representation of this series, I'm taking the sum of, and if I want to, I can use i, right? Instead of n, this is about the nth term, but if I want, I can use i. And then I can start at one and end at 40. So I can represent the summation notation this way. I can use n, I can use i, I can use k. Um, you see I, you see K typically, um, you see N, those are the three variables that you see most when you do uh, this you know, summation notation here. Um, let me do one more then, let me that real fast. One plus, one third plus, one million plus, one twenty. This type of concept is pretty typical. Um, One over okay, so let's say I want to represent the summation notation of this series. <laughs> so I want to do the same thing. I'm going to write the term number underneath the term to help me find a relationship between the two because I need the explicit form of this. The term one, term two, Okay, term one, term two, term three, and term question mark, right? So, um, what's the relationship between the term number and the term? What's the relationship between the term number and the term? So, it looks like the exponent matches the term number, but the base is three, and I'd have to determine that myself. So I'd have to figure out what this value is. So you could play with numbers. It's three to the seventh, which means that this is the seventh term. So if I want to write this in summation notation, the numerator is obviously the same throughout. It's the denominator, so the base of the denominator is going to stay consistent, and then the exponent is going to match the term number. And I'm going to start at term one and end at term seven, and here is my representation, the summation notation of this particular series. I wanted to show this one because sometimes it just takes practice, recognizing that it's the exponent that's changing with these type of series. But you know, I guess I've seen a lot of these. And you know, ah, it'll pop up. Um, then just, uh, just for some practice, just to recognize that that's a situation that pops up often, so. Um, so, yeah.